Okay. Um, okay, first, a bit of logistics. Uh, so this is actually going to be our last class day because uh, people, a lot of people have said they, they want, they, they, they find the being a small group time really helpful and that you guys have a hard time meeting outside of class. And so I just figured, whatever, this is our last class. And you guys have next class period to finish, finish up your, your final revisions on your um, case study. So the uh, last few things that are due, uh, well, you, we have our scoop it stuff, right? But, but the last sort of big assignments are like that, that case study. Overall, give you guys, a, give yourselves a hint. Uh, everybody, all the case studies I looked at this weekend, way better than the first drafts of the first case study from several weeks ago. So thanks to everybody for putting in the time. Um, I know sort of not all of us are used to doing PowerPoint posters and stuff like that, but but hopefully um, you're finding it's easier for you to work on these things and it's making a little more sense and, and you're getting more confidence as we go forward. So overall, um, I was very happy with all the first drafts. So for, for the most part, just tighten it up um, a little more. Uh, and and I, I try to put the comments, it's, it, I don't, it was weird, but um, so in some cases, everybody in the group got the comments and others, a few people didn't. So uh, definitely uh, when we break today or on Wednesday, definitely, um, make sure everybody in the group sees the comments that I, that I typed in um, and, and uh, in the comment section of the, in the uh, grade book. Um, uh, no, they're not super extensive comments, but, but just uh, I think not everybody got the, got the comments so, so that uh, you guys know that. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so that's due Friday like regular, right? And this is just the same thing we're working on, just, just tightened up, maybe a little more cleaner with the references, Maybe a little more specific. Some people just said a big disaster or something. Let's put some numbers on that size, people, cost, you know, specifics, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, also, remember when we cite stuff, it's author year. It's not, it's not Department of Defense or Red Cross. It's Red Cross 2021, right? And then we then we reference it in the um, literature cited section. Okay. Um, all right. Then our, then our, our last two new things that are due next Wednesday. So next Wednesday. Uh, so one is our uh, field trip. We were, were I, I, regrettably, we weren't able to go on our field trip. I was trying to schedule. It just got too hard. We tried four different dates, and it just kept not working with our folks. So that's fine. Um, it was never required. Uh, attending the field trip was never required. This is essentially as our alternative assignment. And so um, basically, you guys are just going to propose a field trip that we could do that's vaguely nearby, right? Something about disasters. So all the stuff that we've been learning about could be wildfires. Could be an earthquake, could be a flood, um, uh, whatever. Um, propose a site nearby that a future class could go on, right? And so you're just going to tell me where that is, and then uh, you know why why it would be of interest to some future group of students to go see, and and what and then what sort of you know key themes would we be um, that you've explored this semester would be tied in there, right? So this can be anywhere within an within you know an, an hour hour and a half drive of us. So there's, there's nothing, there's nothing, um, it doesn't have, so it cannot be CSUCI, but something outside of CSUCI. So it could be something in Thousand Oaks, it could be something in you know, northern LA County, it could be something in southern Santa Barbara County, it could, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's up to you guys, what you guys would think would be a fun one. So that's one. And then uh, the other is a final assessment. So we don't have a final in this class, right? So um, this is sort of like our final, it's not a final, but it's, it's sort of like, you know, let's kind of synthesize our understanding of, of what, we, what we did. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick some place that you know well. Doesn't matter, again, can't be CSUCI, can't be campus, but could be your home, could be your parents' home, could be a place where you work, could be a place where you recreate, it doesn't matter to me, but some place that you have some, you know, some experience. So pick that place. And then you're gonna tell you're gonna tell uh, me um, uh, about it, tell me about it in the context of our disaster class. So first, so three main. Well, you're gonna tell me what it is, but then there's three main parts. One part is, hey, um, what is the vulnerability of this place? What is the what is the potential um, disaster that could that, that we think about in this place? We worry about. This is, this is particularly in the context of wildfires. So the, the prompt I give you is that, um, uh, tell me about what this would be. It, it could lead to other disasters, but the main prompt is about um, Santa Ana driven wildfire. So pick your spot and say, how vulnerable is it to 
to a big conflagration that we seem to have more and more frequently here in Southern California. Two, what has been done in the recent past, so the last five years? Is there anything that's been done? So, so have folks cleared vegetation? Have people worked on evacuation plans? You know, could, you know it's, it's, you're picking the spot, so there's, there's a, a gazillion million possible, per, possible things you could look at. And then the third part, the last part is just, um, uh, so what's the history, what's the vulnerability of this place to a big disaster? Um, at least starting with um, a, uh, a large-scale wildfire. Um, could lead to things other than wildfire, right? It could lead to a mudslide, could lead to other things. Um, but, but start with that. Then, uh, what have we done to try to minimize, to, to try to address that so far? And then the third part is, in the next few years, what could we do? Maybe we could... And, and, and bailing is not an option, saying that we're gonna move out of the house, like that's not, that's not, a, that's not a good answer. But so, so how could we make this business, how could we make this home or, or area uh, you know, more resistant, more resilient to, to, to you know, large scale disaster? And so the idea here is hopefully you're gonna draw on various things we've talked about over the semester, right? The ideas, the themes, maybe you wanna to speak to environmental justice issues, maybe you wanna to speak to um, cost issues, um, um, all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? So, so our final case study is due Friday. These two are due at 10 o'clock next Wednesday. Theoretically, our final time was on Monday, but I pushed it to Wednesday because our class is on Wednesday. Does that make sense? Uh, similarly, if you guys are, are not sure about this, not sure about these guys, you can poke me um, you know, uh, end of the week, yeah, it'll take you a few days, I'm sure, to start working on this, but you can poke me around, starting around Friday on Slack and say, hey, Dr. Ray, do you have five minutes to jump on real quick and just, I wanna, I'm, I'm thinking about this, I want some feedback, right, since it's due finals week and we're not together on finals week. Um, so, so if I didn't say that, I'll say it again. We aren't physically meeting finals week, so we don't have, a, we don't have to come together for a, a drop-off session. Um, so this is all electronically submitted. Cool? Questions? All right, so case study, group assignment. These two, final two are individual, are individually done. Cool? All right. Okay, so um, what did we learn in disasters this, this semester? Um, uh, you guys tell me, what, what, what was the mo one of the most, or some of the most surprising things that, that you learned or, or interesting things that you guys learned so far? We discussed, we read, we did whatever. Nothing. I think one of the most interesting things is how they're like pretty clear, or clear trends in disasters uh -huh. that happen in most disasters, and yet people still like will act surprised most times too. Like they're kind of unrecognized trends, but like they're pretty consistent. Yeah. So, so, so the the big the big patterns, the the, the things that seem to happen at least in the broad strokes, I mean, the individual site is always different, the individual magnitude is always a little bit different, but, but the broad patterns, Jonathan is saying, seems to be repeated and repeated over again, whether it's an earthquake over there or a hurricane over there. Um, good, good. Other, so there's some predictability here, at least, in, at least in the big picture. Great, what else? What else are some things you guys were surprised to learn about or, or found interesting? Uh, how disorganized the responses can be. Yeah, good. So, um, yes, so we, uh, obviously the, as the event unfolds, there's chaos, because there's wind blowing or, or people afraid of getting burned and there's that level of chaos. But maybe even surprising that after that immediate, you know, proximate disaster happens, the recovery period or the response is not always particularly organized, right? Um, and that almost always it defaults back to, or at least, at least a, a significant proportion falls onto the shoulders of the local folks, right? Um, hopefully we have good government, regional, national, whatever support, but, but um, you need to be resilient uh, in your neighborhood with your, with your family and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so while we don't focus on, on that in this class, a fantastic thing for you guys to think about is to do some community disaster planning, right? And so, uh, so there are courses offered by the county of Ventura. 
There are courses, uh, workshops, and things offered by cities, uh, nonprofits. Fantastic idea for you guys, you know, this summer to maybe think about signing up for one of those courses, right? Not that it's not like a certification; you don't have to do A, B, C, or D, but um, but definitely it, it gives you more confidence when you when you um, get into some of the specifics of of preparing uh, your particular home or work for for disasters. So good. Okay, great. So we have we have uh, uh, the trends are pretty broad stroke, are pretty similar. Um, that oftentimes the especially the early parts of the the recovery can be disorganized and a bit chaotic. What else? I think for me, the most surprising is like how common they are. I feel like I maybe just didn't even How common the disasters are. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I mean, we, we just take it from our Scoop It, right? So our Scoop It site, just every week, even, even though um, you guys don't have to post about a specific thing that's happening that day or that week, um, uh, frequently it's, oh my God, there's, we just, you know, the floods in Africa or uh, a, a, a earthquake in the Middle East or, you know, whatever. It's just, it's just, we are a big planet and this is a dynamic planet and there are storms and, and ground shakes and, and uh, that stuff going on uh, nonstop. Yeah, good. What else? Chris? Uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, the cost of these things is always a big part of the story. Yes, it's interesting. So we don't like to pay the big cost, but we also seem to frequently not want to do the investment ahead of time, which would dramatically reduce the cost of, of you know, it's way better to have a, an ounce of prevention than, than to go to the hospital and get, you know, recovered, you know, after. But, um, but yeah, good. And somebody else had a hand up. It's also pretty interesting how everything can be uh, politicized. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. So, so the notion of um, so polarization and politicization. So, um, so while there's always been some degree of this. Um, it's it's um, seeped into. Uh, this is not a disasters phenomenon. This is sort of a societal phenomenon, unfortunately, and and to see how that seeps into even disasters, even one of the one of the clear markers where when the when the disaster comes, we humans always almost always help each other, right? Like the the news stories are always, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Everybody was just out helping each other, and it's like, of course they will, right? This narrative that everybody's like. Lord of the Flies getting ready to stab each other and kill each other, that virtually never happens. Like virtually, virtually, virtually never happens. In the wake of a fire, in the wake of a you know, tsunami, almost everybody is extending a hand to help that lady up. They're, they're, they're pulling the little kid from the rubble, right? That's how it is. That doesn't last for you know, years and years, but that is the norm, right? It's not the norm of we all run and stab each other and step each other on the head trying to get away from the from the whatever. Um, uh, and so there, we used to have this degree of unanimity, right? After, the, I'll we'll just speak for the US. We used to have the, this, this, we're all together. Oh my gosh, these poor folks, their houses got burned down. Oh my God, these poor folks, their, their farm got flooded. And it was like, let's get these folks some help. Unfortunately, now increasingly, it's like, well, I don't know. We got to talk about this bill. I don't know. I want to get this thing and that. And so, so that has seeped into um, this world as well. Good. Other, other themes or other things you guys found surprising or interesting from this semester's stuff? Uh, disasters often have scapegoats or excuses? Uh, yeah, so, so, so um, you know, who's to blame, right? Is a big one. So clearly it was this one person or this one agency or this one this one industry or whatever is, is, you know, the vast, 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 vast majority of the blame. Um, sometimes that's the case, but, but more often than not, it's, it's a more systemic failure when we see problems. But yeah, but we definitely are always really anxious to find that one person, particularly in the, in the very immediate wake or as the disaster is unfolding, which we already know is chaotic and difficult just in the ideal sense. But like, oh my gosh, that guy didn't go and knock on that fifth house and get that, that person out. What a jerk, you know, that kind of thing. 
John. Uh, I don't know if it's ignorance or laziness, but it seems like everything we've looked at for disaster, there's always something beforehand for, for preventative, and then the people just kind of like ignore it or don't do what's necessary. And so it ends up that it could be less worse, but it ends up still happening. Yeah. So the idea of, um, uh, again, as we saw this from some of our rhetorical analysis, but everybody could not imagine this could ever happen. Who could have believed? Oh, this is like a disaster movie, right? All those types of descriptors. Um, I don't know. I see this stuff in the newspaper all the time, right? Um, and, uh, and the classic one, I think, as I mentioned to you guys, but when we were in my lecture on, on hurricanes, um, one of my uh, friends from graduate school was from New Orleans. And in, in the 90s, he was like, hey, man, you got to come visit. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll come visit. He's like, no, no, you got to come visit, like, now. I was like, oh, why? What is it? And he said, because the next hurricane that hits this town is going to screw this place up. It's not going to respond well. It, it's going to be, right? And, and so, so it wasn't like no one understood this. It wasn't like no one was sounding warnings. Um, uh, but the fact remains that's still on us as folks that have taken the time to sort of think about these things to try to be even better communicators to our friends, our family, the community. But yes, it is, it is always um, disappointing when we sort of know that this is a, not just a possibility, but a, a you know, strong probability of happening, something like an earthquake in Southern California, a hurricane on the Gulf Coast, uh, you know, tornadoes in North Texas, you know, that kind of stuff. That, that people aren't uh, prepared. Um, good, any other themes? Are there any other, other, other things that you guys found particularly interesting or surprising this semester? Um, the change in like, legislation post-disaster about how um, certain communities kind of like, learn from their mistakes and become truly like, um, building solutions or new engineering to kind of mitigate potential problems. Yeah, good. So, so all, while these other things are, are still true, some disorganized stuff, people a little reluctant to pay, it's not as if we can't get better from these disasters, right? We definitely can. Um, we can change policies. We can stop doing this. We can start to require folks use a particular building code or, or, or have a certain amount of evacuation, uh, you know, width of evacuation roads and things of that nature. Um, what we've seen, for example, in the, in the Turkey earthquake uh, earlier this year was uh, they have some of the best, some of the best earthquake building codes, regulations in the world. The problem is there's essentially zero enforcement and massive corruption. So even though they have these fantastic policies that have been put in place because they've had historic problems, the second part of that is, is we have to enforce these these rules and these policies and these regulations. Otherwise, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it doesn't do anything to help the people. Um, but good, 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 good. Any other ones? Any other ones you guys were uh, thinking back on? <clears throat> 